Ah, motherhood. One minute, your mom of the year. I love you, mommy. Then the next? Mm, not so much. From bath time to bullying, from potty training to puberty, parenting is full of challenges. But one thing is for certain, you are not alone. Welcome to Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, author, mother, parenting expert, Tara Clark. Join me while we tackle today's Modern Mom Problems. Welcome back to another episode of Modern Mom Probs. I'm your host, Tara Clark. Today's topic is transitioning your children's sleep schedule for back to school. I am joined by Becca Campbell. She's a certified pediatric sleep expert who has been featured in Parents, NBC, Yahoo Life, and Toddler Purgatory. She's the founder of Little Z's Sleep, where she has helped tens of thousands of families with babies and toddlers get a great night's sleep. And she's the host of the Little Z's Sleep Podcast. Becca, welcome to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. This is a topic that's super close to my heart as we're getting ready for all the routine to kick in. So I'm happy to be here. Great. I, and trust me, I need all the help I can get getting my son back into the routine. And so I'm so glad that this is such a timely conversation. So Becca, you are a pediatric sleep expert. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Right. Well, I obviously have not always been. No one is an expert when they become a parent. And so we're always evolving. And I became a parent almost eight years ago. And when my daughter Ellie was born, I thought I had it all covered. I'd done the breastfeeding class. I did the hospital tour. I had the books. I was like, we're good, except that she could not sleep. And I wasn't prepared for that. And so fast forward four months into her life, I woke up one morning and she had fallen asleep and I had brought her into my bed at some point in the night. And I didn't remember that. Woke up and she was under my cover. And that yeah. was like the, oh crap, what is happening moment. Didn't realize how tired I was until something like that happened. Grabbed mm-hmm. her out of my bed and instantly Googled, how do you get a baby to sleep? I didn't care about through the night. Just like, how do you get them to sleep? Because this is not this is not happening. And that really led me onto a journey to discover like, oh my gosh, there's people who can help you do this. This is amazing. <laughs> and so ended up working with a sleep consultant who helped guide me and not like huge way. It's just like, Hey Becca, outside perspective here, this is what you need to do. And it clicked. And within three nights, she was now sleeping 12 hours in her crib and it was amazing. And it was like, yes, more people need to know about this. So that was 2015. And in the last seven years, I have helped tens of thousands of families through our online courses or one-on-one coaching. And our thing at little Z's is that we help you make sleep a thing because I didn't Mm. know that it was. And I want you to know that it is sleep is an actual thing. We can have as parents, we don't have to be exhausted and struggling all the time. We can actually enjoy parenting. And that's really what we're all about is helping people make that journey easier. Gosh, thank God for you that you are around to help parents because let me tell you, we're still trying to make sleep a thing in my family. My my son was never a great sleeper. Unfortunately, like he always had to like either be held or be rocked or be like put in the car, put in a stroller. And so I know he always had a lot of like garbage sleep, I'd like to say, you know, throughout the years. And then even as he got older, he was, he was pretty good about going into his bed and then sleeping through the night. But since the pandemic, he's really needed me there. And so we've been sleeping, like co-sleeping much more than we ever were, you know, previously. And so we sort of like took one step forward and then two steps back. But I always tell my husband, like, look, like I don't mind because he's getting so big. And at some point, like he won't want to even talk to us or cuddle with us, let alone sleep with us. So I'm trying to like soak in all of those cuddles and snuggles now while I can. Yeah. And you know, I'm really glad you said that because this is a, an aside to our conversation, but I think it's really important because having done this for seven years now, I've seen the evolution of people being like, oh my gosh, yes, I need sleep help to now social media, sometimes demonizing the fact that you need help with your child's sleep and that's not normal. And your child should, you know, never do that. And it's polarizing on social media for sure. But what I'm so grateful for, and one big platform of mine is that, listen, if what, if you're doing makes you happy, healthy, and well-rested, do it. <laughs> some people <laughs> yeah. some people want over here and some people want over there and that's fine. You know, we are a solution for people who want help, but the beauty of being a parent is that you get to decide the journey you want to go on. And if it makes you happy and your child happy and healthy, I support that. So, I'm so glad you said that because we're all parenting in different ways, but we're all doing it together. 
Right. Exactly. That's always my platform for it too. Like, although like our experiences and journeys look different, at least we could all support each other in our decisions doing that. So like I said, my son is nine. We've run the gamut from him sleeping in his bed by himself, him sleeping with me, like all of those things. And so now as we're heading back to school, what are some tips that parents can employ to help our children be well-rested? Right. So one of the biggest things that we kind of forget about is that in the start of the school year, it's very overwhelming. No matter what your school system is like, if you're year-round school and you had a few weeks break or you had a big summer break, school is overwhelming, even if they're you know well-seasoned. And so this is a big transition from the lazy days of summer to now we are in school. And my number one tip that I always like to just start off with, and then we'll backtrack from here, is your child is going to need to go to bed earlier than they ever have the entire summer when they're back at school. It's a new teacher, a new class, a new friend, new systems, new like oh, sensory overload of newness. And oftentimes when the child goes back to school, we instantly want to get them home and like, oh, now let's like enjoy you. I haven't seen you all day. So like, let's stay up. And then you kind of keep your same rhythm of whatever you've been doing in the summer afternoons because it still feels in this early September, you know, August, it's nice outside. Let's still get out in the evening and enjoy it. But the reality is they need to go to bed. So if we know when they go to school, we're going to need to have an earlier bedtime that doesn't start the first day of school, that starts a few weeks before school begins. So a really easy way to start acclimating your child into this is week by week, start getting them to bed 15 minutes earlier. Not a huge deal, but if they have maybe now gotten accustomed to an 8.30, 8 o'clock bedtime, but they are elementary school, they might need an earlier bedtime for a little bit. And so you're going to go from 8.30 to, okay, 8.15 for a week, and then we'll go to 8 o'clock for a week, and maybe 7.45 for a week. But really what I want to look at is for an elementary schooler, they still need anywhere between 10 to 12 hours of sleep at night. So backtrack what time they need to get up in the morning. Let's meet in the middle. I'll say 11 hours because that's actually pretty average. Let's look at that time. If they need to get up at 6.30 a.m., let's back up. And now 7.30 is the latest they need to go to sleep. So make that your target goal as you're looking at these 15-minute increments. And that's the easiest way is 15 minutes every week. Do a little bit earlier, a little bit earlier until you hit your target goal of bedtime. Gosh, that is good. But my math, I'm doing math quickly in my head, and I probably needed to start six weeks ago to be able to catch up. (laughs) That's the second thing I was going to say is if this has caught you off guard, like, oh, shoot, I didn't do this. I didn't do this adjustment period. It's okay. Kids are adaptable and it's fine. But if you especially have, I'll say nine-year-old, my daughter's almost eight, they can tell time on a clock. And Mm -hmm. so it's going to be a little bit hard to just all of a sudden one night be like, all right, your bedtime's off. 7 30 and they've been going to bed at nine. That's not going to happen. So right. definitely have a conversation with your child about how, Hey, now that we're getting ready to be back at school, we're starting school next week. We need to kind of get into a rhythm of going to bed a little bit earlier because gosh, your brain is going to be soaking up everything new and you're just going to be tired. So let's start that now. The beauty we have also in summer is that we can kind of still hit up the pool, go outside, play, play, play. So as we do move bedtime earlier, and maybe you don't have time to do all those 15-minute shifts, have the opportunity to go out and get all the energy out as possible so that it's a little easier to convince them to go to bed earlier because they're tired. So maybe instead of a 9 o'clock bedtime tonight, we're going to go with an 8.30 bedtime, and we're going to just plan to hit up the pool all afternoon and just be wiped out so you can go to bed. So if you missed the 15 minute window, it's okay. You can jump a little bit more, but that concept of just bringing things earlier so that they can get an average between, I would say like 10 to 11 hours of sleep each night, that's going to really help your child be the best student that they can be and be the happiest in your family. So that's important. That That's so important. What do you think is like the best. Now I hate using the word the best. So I'm using this in air quotes. What is the best bedtime for children? Yeah. So elementary schoolers, because there's kind of a wide range of age here, the kindergartners, absolutely. I'm like all on board for 11 to 12 hours of sleep. It's a lot of new. So if you are a kindergarten, I just posted a reel about this today. If you are a kindergarten family, that is just the most overload they will ever get right there. And so they really still need 11 to 12 hours of sleep. First on up, we're probably looking at 10 to 11 hours of sleep. My eight-year-old gets about 10 and a half hours of sleep every night. 
What we're looking at though for ideal bed timing, it could be anywhere between 7 and 8.30, kind of in that zone. I would actually put the kindergartners in their separate category because my kindergartner, we put her to bed at 6.30 for months when she first got started because she was wiped. And we, I know Hattie. Hattie is someone who she doesn't show you she's tired. She's like the classic like youngest child. She's just going to go with the flow, do whatever. But you will know that she's overtired because she wakes up so early in the morning and then she's just a bear throughout the day. And right. so if you recognize with your child like, hey, our bedtime is eight o'clock, but man, they're really fighting me at bedtime and they're waking up at five to six a.m. I'm not sure they're getting enough sleep. Typically, for a child in elementary school, early morning waking, the number one way to solve that is to get them to bed earlier because they're overtired. They're overstimulated. They're overtired. It's just too much. Many times after 8, 15, 8, 30, our kids can get a second wind mm-hmm. and probably parents are like, yep, I know that. Yep. yep. Um, <laughs> that sounds familiar. Uh-huh. Yep. So if we can catch them before that, that's helpful. If you have an older, older elementary, like 12 years old, older kind of thing, which I think that's approaching middle school age, but they actually, their circadian rhythms change a little bit and they need a little bit of a later bedtime, but not of our, not our elementary schoolers. They really do need somewhere between that seven and eight thirty range. It's going to be different per kid, but the best way to know is that your child should be able to fall asleep. And I say independently, if that's your goal, but they should be able to fall asleep within 15 to 20 minutes. If they can do that, they're at the right bedtime. If it's taking longer than that, they likely don't have the right bedtime. So that's kind Mm. of a good gauge. Yeah. Let's talk about sleeping independently and falling asleep independently. Can we explore that a bit? Yes. This is one of my favorite topics for this age because the reason they are not falling asleep independently is because they literally don't think that they can. That's that's it. They don't think they can, and they're lacking the confidence to do it by themselves. And I've seen this over and over again because they've become conditioned to whatever it is and whoever it is that helps them fall asleep. They don't know that they've lost confidence, but that's exactly what's going on. And so to fall asleep independently, and if you want to teach your child to do that, then we kind of need to backtrack and look at what do they think they need? Do they think they need their back rub? They think they need to lay with mom and dad or lay with caregiver, whoever it is, it's helping them fall asleep and then they sneak out. The problem is, however, they're falling asleep at bedtime. If you then wonder why are they waking up all throughout the nighttime, Basically, what's happened here is, let's just put mom, that's usually what's happening. Mom is in the driver's seat, rubbing, laying with, stroking the hair of the child, and driving them figuratively into sleep. That's what's happening. Okay, okay, let's go to sleep. Let's go to sleep. Okay, you're you're asleep. Good. Kick you out of the car, figuratively. (laughs) Then leave the room, literally. And then we wonder why they wake up at 1.30 and they can't go back to sleep by themselves. Well, they don't know how to drive their own car. They are, they're stuck. They're stranded. They need you to come back in, get in the car, drive them back to sleep again, and then the cycle repeats. So this is the problem is that they are not confident that they can do it themselves. They can be in the driver's seat. They can grab their buddies, their stuffed animals, their blankets, their other coping mechanisms. We actually use the Zenimal, which is a screen-free meditation device for kids and for adults. But my daughter listens to that to fall asleep. It calms her anxious thoughts. And that's still independent because she doesn't depend on me. She grabs it. She turns it on. But having those independent skills is so helpful. And then it makes sense. The light bulbs go off. Oh, no wonder I'm having to get up twice in the middle of the night to go help him fall back to sleep because he doesn't know how to do it himself. So if we put him in the driver's seat, he'll be able to do that. So that's like the baseline foundation of what's happening and why they're waking up throughout the night, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes so much sense. We have to give them their driver's license. Come on, guys. Here's your driver's (laughs) license. Let's go. I know. This episode of Modern Mom Probs is sponsored by Sambacol. Fall is right around the corner, and you know what that means. Cooler weather, layers, and of course, the kids are heading back to school. Did you check off all the items on that never-ending back-to-school list? New clothes, notebooks, pencils, brand new backpack, the kids want it all. But have you thought about how to help keep them healthy when they're heading back to school? That's where Sambacol comes in. My son and I recently started taking Sambacol every day to help support our immune systems so we could keep doing what we need to do. 
Sambacol is made from premium European black elderberries, which are natural sources of powerful antioxidants and key vitamins like A, C, and E. They help support a healthy immune system and help you power through your day. What's so great about Sambacol is they have tons of different ways to help your daily helping of black elderberry, like syrups, gummies, chewable tablets, drink powders, capsules, and more. They even have products made just for kids. My husband, my son, and I all take Sambacol. We love the gummies. We eat them right after dinner, but before we start the nighttime routine, it's sort of just like a nice little treat and a nice way to end the day. So make a healthy immune system part of your back-to-school strategy this year with Sambacol. My listeners get 15% off their next order of $9.99 or more at SambacolUSA.com by using my promo code MOMPROBS15 at checkout. That's 15% off your order of $9.99 or more at sambacallusa.com. Use code MOMPROBS15 at checkout. Okay, here's a pro tip. Save this promo code and website address in your notes app. I know you're busy. Too busy to remember a promo code or to sort through episodes to find it again. Save it and use it when you have a few minutes to shop. The code again is MOMPROBS15 and the website is sambacallusa.com. How do you then transition, and I'm totally asking this selfishly, but like, how do you transition someone, you know, who you have been rubbing their back, holding their hand, that sort of thing as they're going to sleep? Like, how do you make that transition now, especially with the school you're starting? Yeah, for sure. So this is where we bring in the term sleep training, where most people are like, Becca, that's for babies, not for children. It's it's for all, it's for everybody. So we're just training them and teaching them how we go to sleep. And so in this case, then it's kind of come down to your philosophy, right? I don't necessarily teach, like people always think cry it out, extinction method, that's sleep training. It, that's not true. That's just one aspect of it. But it doesn't work for older children because they can get up and just walk out the room and they can talk right. back to you. Like, right. it's different. Exactly. It's very so different. In this, what you're going to want to do is set up a system where, okay, what does this mean for you? Are you going to gradually remove yourself little by little every night? Are you going to, if it's an older child, have a sit down discussion with them about how they can do this and how you're going to support them? And let's talk about other things that you can do to fall asleep, like grabbing your teddy bear or taking deep breaths or whatever that looks like for you. Um, we have bedtime cards that we use inside of my child's preschool and young child sleep course where we have these visual cues to teach them how to fall asleep. We talk about closing your eyes, taking a breath, being still. Like You have to teach your child how to fall asleep in just those simple modes. It's not complicated, but teaching them this is how we go to sleep. And it sounds silly, because you're going to be like, well, don't just do it. Just close your eyes and do it. But it's, it's really, <laughs> it's the reality of they actually, since, okay, they don't have the confidence. How are they, how are they going to build the confidence? You need to teach them how to do that. And it really is, is like, okay, let's make a plan to get out of the room. Let's make a plan for you to have something that you can control. And then let's make a plan to teach you how we close our eyes, lay in bed still. And then this is the additional one I'm, I'm about to say. And it's going to open up another can, which is stay in bed until the clock turns whatever, a number or a color. And they have to have a system and boundaries in place. Our children understand that they should stay in their bed, but we have to have some type of cue for them to be like, well, when is it time to get out of bed? And that's when I, I love clocks, a simple toddler clock or a simple hatch clock, something like that. Those are tools that we can use with them to teach them the boundaries. And then I love rewards, instant rewards, not big gifts every single day. And I'm not about the, hey, do this for a whole week and you get to have blah, 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 because mm -hmm. they'll lose the excitement of that and they'll mm -hmm. forget about it. Mm -hmm. Praise works the best. Having you know special time in the morning or if it's a weekend and they can watch a show in the morning, like whatever it is to your kid that's special. But rewards are always a great way to entice them and get them motivated to what they're doing. So all of these small steps building up and however and whatever looks best for your family is definitely the starting point. Yeah, no, that that's a good starting point. I want to talk about screens too, because like, you know, it's 2022 and screens are all around us and, and it's hard sometimes for certain people to pull themselves off of said screens. And so I want to talk about like how screens also impact sleep. Oh, they definitely do. And I've, I've seen it and I've heard it all, right? Like from the kids who have to watch YouTube to fall asleep at night or they've got to have an iPad next to their bed, whatever that is, it is a problem. But no parent, I just want to say this, no parent ever 
dreamed, oh, I sure, sure hope my kid would fall asleep to YouTube one day. That's not where you thought you would be. <laughs> it, it just happened because parenting is hard <laughs> and you're tired. You're done at the end of the day. So if your kid just wants to watch something on YouTube, great. You're just going to hand on the iPad and be like, great, because I'm tired and you need to go to sleep. So go. So I want to acknowledge first, like you're not a bad parent if that's what's happening. It's just this is the solution that's been working and it's been a Band-Aid. But now let's recognize that in reality, screens and blue light are actually blocking the release of melatonin for your child. So a common thing I find is that the child is watching a screen, they have the iPad in their bed at nighttime, and they've been given melatonin gummies. None of this makes sense. Oh, it's because, like uh, counteracting yeah. each other. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so in reality, what we know and actually like what research shows us is that children don't need melatonin supplements. It's not something they need unless there is some research that shows that ADD, autism, ADHD, these things, sometimes those children are lacking some melatonin. So that might be helpful, but talk to a specialist. But in majority of the cases, children don't need melatonin supplements. They have enough naturally occurring melatonin. All they need to do is go outside. So what happens is as the sun gets lower in the sky, our brain starts to produce melatonin and tells the child, okay, it's evening, it's time to get sleepy. So go outside. Instead of the iPad or shows after dinner, go outside, let them run around, let them have fun. That's getting their energy out, but it's also cueing their body that it's the end of the day, it's time for bed. When we hand our child a screen, it's stimulating their brain. It's not getting them to calm down. And it's blocking the release of a very important hormone that helps them go to sleep and stay asleep. So my general rule of thumb is no screen time within two hours of bedtime. And that's pretty like generous. If you can, and you know, this is a big fight. If, if one hour is all you can give me, I'll take it. But two hours is going to be the best for this. And for parents too. I mean, gosh, I'm, I mean, I'm I'm guilty. I fall asleep, you know, just a few minutes, like scrolling my phone and then I'll put it down and go to sleep. I'm guilty of that for sure. But here's the thing with our kids, something that's definitely been an issue is the stimulation, which then can lead to some bad dreams, some bad thoughts throughout the night. And we don't want that. Yeah, of course. And the last thing I was going to say is that for adults with screen time, if you are having trouble sleeping throughout the nighttime and you're on your phone, that's the first thing to get rid of. I always joke that like, yes, I'm a sleep coach and I look at my phone before I go to bed, right? That's not great. But the moment I have a hard time sleeping, that's gone. For me, mm -hmm. I can close my eyes and sleep eight and a half hours, no problem all night long. But mm -hmm. for children and for people who are having trouble sleeping, not a great habit to be getting into. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think sometimes for me, well, it definitely is the phone, but also I find it like when you wake up in the morning and then you go to reach for the phone, I feel like that's not the healthiest choice either. Oh my gosh, you've, yeah, you've read my mind. This is something <laughs> I got out of, like it's, it's cycles of my life. I got out of the habit and then I got in the habit, especially because mm -hmm. when I used to do one-on-one -on -one sleep coaching, you know, and being an entrepreneur, like I would grab my phone and immediately start answering people's questions, immediately start working at 6.15 in the morning. I have no mm -hmm. business doing that. Like what? Mm -hmm. And then I set the whole tone for the day of frustration. And yes. I realized that. And so I stopped for a while. I put my phone in another room. I'm in a phase now. I think it's just the summer phase of laziness. Like I don't always go to sleep scrolling my phone and then putting it down and going to sleep. But I feel like that's where we are. It's like, I'm watching something. It's chill. So I this is, this is a great episode for me to be like, Becca, snap back into it. Because you're right. Starting the Ending the day and starting the day, grabbing your phone, not the best way. And like, we know that. We know that mm -hmm. for sure. So yeah, that's a great encouragement for everybody. Yeah. I, I mean, I am guilty of that just as much as the next girl. And so sometimes like this morning, I'll give you an example. This morning I did that. I grabbed my phone. It was 630. It was like still relatively dark out because it was cloudy today. And I started scrolling my phone and I was like, why? No, Tara, you know better than to start your day like this. You know yep. better, but sometimes you just can't help yourself. Whether it's like that dopamine hit or you had to see like the news headline or whatever it happens to be, you have to, you know, check your DMs. It's like, Sometimes you just can't help yourself. You should, oh, but you yeah. can't. Oh my gosh. We should just, there's a whole nother podcast episode on like mom entrepreneurs and the problem you have with like, with the dopamine <laughs> hit, right? Because it yes. is like, you're like, I want to start the day really good. Oh yeah. Look at this amazing thing. But then, you know, what's hiding behind that amazing thing is something that makes you really sad and something yes. that frustrates your day. And you're like, why, why did I do that? I didn't have to. Yes. So yeah, yes. this is a challenge. I, I thought, I literally thought about it this morning. I've got to put it away because also my kids see that. Like we, 
we are about to get back to school in just a few weeks and I've, I'm going to get back into my routine just like they are. But right now, like my girls sleep 11-ish hours on average throughout the night and they come into our room in the morning and this is the best part. I love snuggling with them in the morning. Like, yeah, get in the bed. Let's talk. Let's, you know, they'll never go back to sleep, but like, let's just talk about the day. But mm-hmm. they actually come in and they see me on my phone and I have recently been thinking like, when they get phones one day, they're not going to have them in their room. So why do I get to have it right here and like show them that this is what you do? And I've been thinking about that lately. And I'm glad you said that out loud because that's my challenge. Yes. And now now that we're talking about it, I also need to to be better about that. This morning I was on my phone and my my son woke up and he looked for a second because he thought it was our cat, but it was like me putting my phone away. And I felt guilty for that split second of like, ah, he caught me. You know, he caught me. The first thing he saw this morning was me, you know, finishing up on my phone. And and so it it should have been, I don't know, anything but that, I feel like. It just, you know, he he was excited to see the kitten and it wasn't the kitten. It was me scrolling mindlessly. Yes, I'm with you. Yes, my kids are like, yay, good morning, mommy. I'm like, yeah, just let me finish the scroll. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, know. it's yeah. bad. It's bad. So like as parents, how can we change our sleep routine to get ready for the new school year? Yeah. So, you know, we're all about helping our children like, yeah, let's get to bed earlier. Let's have this routine. A bedtime routine is good. And I've slacked on mine and I knew I, this is something that, yeah, end of summer, let's get back into the routine from, from me and for parents in general, like, what is it that brings you some joy at the end of the night? That's just for you. Like for me, what's just for me is sitting on my back porch with nobody around me. Like that's just for me. And so I do that every night after the girls go to sleep, I'm going to go, I'm just going to sit out there for at least just a few minutes to just look at the trees because that makes me happy and at least calms me down. And so I want parents to think about like, what are the small routines? You're already doing a bedtime routine. You just don't call it that. You're brushing your teeth, washing your face, getting into bed. But what is something in there that can kind of help like ground you, calm you down, have a little bit of reflection time? If you are someone who struggles with with just calming down and stopping the crazy thoughts in your mind, I'll pull back that product I mentioned, the Zenimal. We love it. We have a referral code for it. It's amazing. And it's going to help you just kind of have that moment of reflection. And having something for yourself at the end of the day and separate, okay, my kids are in bed. I'm finished with the day. It's time for me. That's really helpful. And it's going to help you feel like you're more ready for bed. So creating your own bedtime rhythm, creating something that's just for you, that is definitely something I would suggest parents do. Also look at you're likely going to have to get up a little bit before your child. And honestly, I've been there too, the cycles of of the school year where I'm like, I'm up an hour before my kids. And then the later the school year, I'm like, you know, getting up as soon as they get up. But it really makes a difference to start your morning a little bit before your kids get up. And so with that, since you're going to have to get up early, now it's your job to go to bed a little bit earlier. Maybe instead of 11, 30, 12, you're not going to bed at 10, 30, 11. So let's start to pull that back a little bit because as adults, we actually need about seven to nine hours of sleep every single night. That's different for person. I have to have eight and a half to nine hours or I don't Mm -hmm. function. And so recognize that what that is for yourself and aim to get that by getting to bed when you can. Yeah, that's that's such a good, important takeaway. So speaking of takeaways, what is your key takeaway for my listeners right now, Becca? Okay, key takeaway is watch your child's behavior and recognize that it's not necessarily the chaos of school. It's probably because they're tired. So get them to bed early. I recognize this in kids around like the September, October mark because they have just been back to school for a little bit. You're kind of in the zone and you hear about behavior problems and then you recognize like, well, you kind of been slipping a little bit. Like they need to get to bed earlier. Remember that? Get to bed earlier. So when you look at your child, and they seem like out of sorts, irritable. It's they're, they're cranky from the day. Get them to bed. That is literally the best gift you could give them is just get them ready for bed. And don't think that an hour earlier bedtime is crazy. They likely need that. So don't fight it on them. Give them that earlier bedtime. It is the best thing you can do. Sleep is good. That's, Sleep that's, is good. I'm going to cut it all. That's it. Sleep is a good thing. <laughs> Sleep is a thing and it is good. Absolutely. <laughs> Becca Campbell, tell everyone where we can find you online. Yeah, just head to our website, littlezsleep.com. That's where we house our YouTube, our podcast, our courses, everything. So yeah, connect with us on our website. Excellent. Thank you so much for coming today. You had so many incredible insights that I'm like feverishly taking notes so that I could apply them to my own life. Me too. Thank you for having me. (laughs)
Thanks for listening to today's episode of Modern Mom Probs. I hope you enjoyed our deep dive in today's problem with me, your host, Tara Clark. Join me next time when I'll be interviewing another great guest and tackling another modern mom problem. If you enjoyed today's episode, please leave us a review and a rating. As always, you could head over to Modern Mom Probs on Instagram and give me a follow or check out my book, Modern Mom Probs, A Survival Guide for 21st Century Mothers, available online wherever books are sold. Well, that's it for today. See you next time, folks.